Hey everybody, it's Justin the Diabetic. Um, this week I don't have too much planned, but I am kind of feel bad. I'm gonna explain some things that are going on in my personal life with you guys. So maybe that way you'll understand why over the past couple weeks my videos haven't been um, as normal or as long as um, they typically are. So let's dive into that first. Um, we have been extremely short staffed at my job. So whereas I typically have five off days to kind of work on videos and come up with ideas and make them and edit them. Um, I'm down to three or less. Um, it just kind of depends. Typically I work one to two overtime days, um, an off period, and that kind of, that has backed up some personal stuff um, at home. With that being said at home, um, when I bought my house at the end of 2019, we hired a contractor to, um, to redo our master bathroom. We had a uh, bathtub and shower combo that we wanted to remove and just make it a nice big, um, walk-in shower. Long story short, um, he didn't do the shower correctly and we've only used it a week um, in the almost year and a half that I've lived in the house. So um, I have took it upon myself to completely demolish the old shower. I'll put some pictures here for you guys to show you the pro progress. Um, I've completely demolished the old shower um, and I am working to rebuild the new shower. Um, a lot of corners were cut and things weren't done properly for the um, original shower. So I'm trying to do my best to make sure that I don't cut those corners and I do everything um, as best as I can for this new one. So um, before you even ask, um, I, I thought the individual was a licensed contractor, which come to find out he was not. So if I take legal action against him, then I'm out all my legal fees for him to turn around and file bankruptcy and me not get a penny. So it's just cheaper for me just to move on about it and redo the shower and be done with it. Um, so far the process has um, been going very smooth, um, but I've been trying to do that as quickly as I can on my off days, as well as some other, um, other family matters have kind of popped up that have slowed me down. So, um, so anyway, I just wanted to apologize to you guys because I feel like um, I haven't been doing videos um, to the level that I normally do, um, and I'm sorry for that. Um, so let's dive into some updates about my 770G. Uh, for those of you who've been following along, um, I believe it was two weeks ago, I posted the video um, where I was having a bunch of problems with auto mode, couldn't really get any answers from anybody at Medtronic. Then the uh, next week I posted that after that video, um, I was reached out to by a couple of Medtronic people trying to connect me to the head of research and development for him to review my data and maybe uh, come up with a resolution. Um, yeah, well, I haven't really heard anything back. Um, I have been touched base with, um, with the ambassador team to see if um, there has been any resolve and I told them that there has not. Um, I have been in manual mode for over two weeks now um, and it's a shocking difference. Uh, in some areas. Um, I am going to share with you guys um, my time and range for my assessment and uh, progress report. I'm comparing the last seven days to three weeks before. And I asked, also wanted to touch base with you guys and share to see if you happen to know that this is available for you and you could experiment with it and see if it helps you with your blood glucose um, after eating. So if you are in manual mode on a Medtronic pump um, and you're just bolusing, doing a regular bolus and uh, um, your sugar spike really high, but it takes a while for it to come down, you could look into a dual or a square wave bolus um, to make sure that they're turned on. You're going to go all the way to the bottom to options. Then you're going to go to uh, delivery settings and then... Uh, making sure I'm under the right spot. Um, then you're gonna go under delivery settings and then at the very bottom it says dual slash square wave. Make sure both of those are turned on. So to kind of explain what they do, so when you do your normal bolus, let's say um, you're gonna program for a protein bar and it takes three units of insulin, it's gonna give you all three units of insulin at the very beginning once you start that bolus. A dual wave bolus would take that same three units of insulin and break it into two separate boluses. So if you want half of that now, that 1.5 units now, and then you want the other 1.5 units, let's say in 15 or 20 minutes, 
15 to 45 minutes, whatever you feel it is needed, um, you can do that and you'll get that second portion then. A square wave bolus is the same thing, but let's say that you're eating a meal or something that's larger and you have 10 units of insulin. So you're gonna do a square wave bolus over a two hour period. That's gonna give you 2.5 units of insulin every 30 minutes. So you'll get 2.5 and you'll get 2.5, 2.5 and then 2.5. So it'll start with the 2.5 at the beginning and then give you the increments and it'll give you that whole constant line of extra insulin over a two hour period. That is also a other option. It just kind of depends. They're kind of um, more beneficial for high fat meals. Um, something that would spike your sugar and it typically takes a while for your blood glucose to come back down. You can use that and it's a easy way to kind of, let me get a little bit of insulin now to get in my body and then later down the road I'm gonna eat and then I'll get the rest of my insulin after. Um, that's kind of the way that these are designed. So um, you can play around with them and see what works for you. I like the dual wave bolus. Um, I'm actually gonna use it shortly after recording this video when I go grab my food on my way to work. I am going to uh, have Chick-fil-A um, I'm not currently on my diet, so don't judge. And I'm going to enjoy those waffle fries. Definitely going to enjoy them. And uh, I'm going to use the dual wave bolus um, and bolus about 30 minutes for me before I um, go to get my food. And then, um, well, I say about 30 minutes before I plan on eating my food. Let me say it that way. Just because I uh, want to give it a little extra time to work. I'm sure my sugar is a little higher than I want since I'm currently sensor free because it's sensor change day. So when I stop recording this video in a minute, I will go put my sensor on and start the two hour warm up. So when I took my sensor off, my blood glucose was around 150 and I'm pretty sure that um, it's come up a little bit since I have showered and removed my pump. So it's probably around 160, 170. So I'll have to correct um, as well as start planning for my food. So let's dive into my assessment and progress report, kind of comparing manual mode versus auto mode. So in the last seven days, I was in auto, uh, manual mode 100% of the time. My sensor wear was 93%, six days and 12 hours. My average blood glucose was 128 plus or minus 36. And my uh, I received 3.4 low alerts and 7.5 high alerts. I do have my high blood sugar in manual mode set at a limit of 150 and my low of 65, just to give you guys that additional information. Um, so let's kind of compare that to the auto mode information. So three weeks prior, I was in auto mode 93% of the time. I was in manual mode for 7% during sensor change. And I had my sensor wear of 96% of the time. My average blood sugar was 150 plus or minus 32, and I did not have any low alarms, and I had 6.4 high alarms, which in manual, excuse me, auto mode, uh, my high alert threshold is set at the 180 that Mechatronic also uses for their time and range numbers. So just looking at that data, you can see that the um, my average blood sugar was decreased by almost 25 points from 150 to 128. And the deviation was was 36 for manual mode and 32 for auto mode. So that stayed similar. All right, moving on. The average blood glucose for finger sticks in manual mode was 139 plus or minus 40. In auto mode, it was 160 plus or minus 34. Blood sugar calibrations per day in manual mode was 5.4 or 2.3. So I did, I pricked my finger and entered a blood glucose 5.4 times and I used that for calibrations 2.3 times um, on the average of the day. In manual, excuse me, auto mode, um, I entered a blood glucose value 5.3 times and I used for calibration 2.6 times. So you can see that in auto mode, I'm typically doing a, um, a, an extra calibration or, or so, excuse me, every um, couple days. Now here's something that I think is a little different and it's a little weird um, for me, but my total daily insulin dose um, for manual mode is 88.9 units a day, which if you look at the, the, the standard blood sugars and everything, we're getting a lot better numbers and time and range with manual mode. But auto mode, 
um, is 49.9 units. So that's almost a 30 to 40 units difference in total daily insulin use. Um, I'm going to say that that has to do with the fact that I'm having tighter control. I'm using more insulin. I wish that I could get auto mode to use more insulin to maintain tighter control. Um, we're going to dive into next the difference between bolus and basal with manual and auto mode. And I think that's where you guys are going to see a big difference and kind of be able to touch base um, with the data from last week's video. So my bolus amount per day in manual mode was 21.5 units, which is 24% of my total daily insulin usage. And my basal rate is 67.4, which is 76% of my manual mode insulin usage per day. So auto mode, um, my basal rates, uh, or excuse me, my auto bolt, my bolus amount of insulin was 12.8 units of insulin, which is 26%. And my auto basal is 37.1 units, which is 74% of my total daily insulin delivery in auto mode. Um, so let's kind of compare a couple things. So in manual mode, I'm entering in um, more carbs because the carb ratio um, in my pump is significantly lower, which is meaning that I'm getting less insulin per carbs. Um, that's just what I found that works best for me. And in auto mode, the carb ratio is much higher. Well, excuse me, the carb ratio is much lower because I'm getting more insulin for a smaller amount of carbs. So um, in manual mode, I program for 96 plus or minus 37 grams of carbs. And in auto mode, I program for 27 plus or minus 10. Um, I've been trying to do my diet um, here, but I have noticed lately in manual mode, I have been eating more carbs um, just to kind of have more stable um, blood sugars and not tr I'm trying to prevent the lows um, and the pump from suspending quite as much. So what does all that mean? So basically I feel that um, Auto mode is really cautious. So it's kind of like somebody who drives and they accelerate really hard and they let off the gas and they coast for a while. I feel like that's the way auto mode functions. And that acceleration that we see is um, you have to give it more insulin or you have to give yourself more insulin for when you eat. And then auto mode will kind of do the coasting between your meals. Whereas in manual mode, I'm getting a steady state supply of insulin. And during my boluses, I'm not having to take as much insulin. So that way the carb ratio is different. Um, I feel like that's the difference between um, auto mode and manual mode. Kind of, you know, you have that driver on the interstate who's not using cruise control, who just accelerates and slows down. And that's more auto mode. Whereas you have somebody on the interstate, I wanted to say grandma, but I don't want to offend anybody, but you have somebody on the interstate who's just cruising, they set their cruise control at a steady speed, and that's just what they're doing. Um, so I feel like that's the, a good correlation between the two. So my time and range for manual mode versus auto mode, if you don't know already or haven't picked it up. So in auto mode, I was time and range 79% with 21% of that being high. Um, a blood, blood glucose above 180. And then my time and range in manual mode was 91% with 9% of that being above 180. So it's a dramatic difference there. 22% um, time and range better in manual mode. I do enjoy manual mode better because there's no alarms. <laughs> I'm not really getting woken up, especially if my sugar's within range and it's not going high or it's not going low. Um, I'm not really getting any alerts. With that being said, last week when I was showing my CareLink report, somebody said, how are you not getting alerts? Um, I do not get notified in manual mode if my pump suspends. It will pop up on there that it has suspended, but it's not gonna constantly alarm. And um, it also does not alarm when it resumes insulin delivery. It just kind of gives me a notification. So um, that's kind of the way I have my pump set up. It does really well. Um, so yeah, that's this week. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. It is a little longer than I planned it to be, but um, I'm here for questions. If you have anything, drop a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that likes button. You guys have been doing that a lot lately and I'm enjoying it. And uh, hit that subscribe button as well. Um, we've picked up quite a few subscribers, but there's 
steal a lot of people who are checking out my videos who are not subscribed. So after you hit that subscribe button, go ahead and hit the notification bell. So that way you're stay tuned for when I do an impromptu video that's not on a Friday. So I will see you guys next week and hopefully you have a wonderful weekend and stay uh, safe with your blood sugars. Bye.